Welcome to the latest in this series. We're thrilled to be doing this with the Harris School, and we're thrilled to have Jessica, who's going to be a lot more fun than the monetary economists. And you know, and I think next month we're having a two-star admiral, so this should be a lot more fun. Um, I'm going to I'm going to pass the baton to Damien to introduce Jessica because they're good friends. So I just wanted to say one thing about Damien, which is every time I introduce one of these talks, I always say come by the Paulson Institute and our door is open. And for students especially, when I say our door is open, I really mean especially that Damien's door is open because he, a door. He, if, if you had a door, so this is a guy you should know because he does a lot of the contact that we have with students, but also because um, it's not just because I've worked with him in a couple of incarnations. He's someone you should know because I think he's just about the best China expert of his generation of China experts. So that kind of 30-something uh, generation and is the author of one of, I think, the two or three best books on China that's come out in the last couple of years called In Line Behind a Billion People. So it also has a great title. So buy the book, come push open Damien's door, and come work with the Paulson Institute. And with that, I'm going to let Damien do the introduction this time instead of me. Over to you. Great. Well, thank you for that generous introduction, Evan. Um, so I was thinking back about uh, the last year of our talks here. It's been a lot about, you know, on you know, U.S.-China geopolitics, big economic challenges, really big things that define the bilateral um, relationship. But what we haven't talked about, I think, is the other side, the other side of the U.S.-China relationship, which I think is just as important, which is really the bottom up the people-to-people -people relationships, people-to-people -people connections and diplomacy that, ha that really happens on a regular basis, often below the radar, and don't get the kind of headlines that we th that we tend to see in the news, and is filled with young people with creative ideas, entrepreneurs who are who are doing really interesting things in both countries. And our guest today, Jessica, I think really uh, is at the forefront of doing the re these really interesting creative entrepreneurial things. Uh, she kind of is at the nexus of both online education education, people-to-people -people diplomacy, and, uh, you know, really establishing connections to a, to, 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 a, to a, you know, young generation of Chinese who are really experiencing U.S. for the first time. And I know uh, that s some of you here are actually already fans of her, of her TV show and her, and her, actually her web show. And uh, uh, I knew Jessica, oh, several years ago back in D.C. when I profiled her briefly for The Atlantic uh, before she has, uh, was a billion interactions on Cena Waple. Uh, I like to think I helped a little bit in getting to that one billion number, but uh, uh, I don't want to uh, take too much time away from Jessica, who has a very lively, interactive presentation. So with fur without further ado, I give you Jessica Beinecke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My mic's on, so that's for you. Dajahal. <laughs> I can see there are a lot of Omji Mayu fans maybe in the audience. Chase your Omji Mayu fans. We got a couple. Okay, great. Um, my name is Jessica Beinecke. I might take a seat. No, I'm going to stand. Um, and I am the producer and host of OMG Mayu, which teaches American English and conversational phrases to our Chinese audience on Chinese social media. We also, my small, small production company also produces Crazy Fresh Chinese. And it's for Americans or English speakers who really want to learn Chinese. And it's also for sparking that interest in learning Chinese in American high schools and colleges, mostly undergrad. Uh, so before I tell you about my story and how you can start your own blog to tell you how I do it so you all can kind of work on your passion and write your own blogs. I'd love to just walk you through the process that I have been taking for the past three years in creating a blog and helping empower you all to do the same so that those people-to-people -people exchanges uh, are the ones making headlines instead. Before we get there, I'd love to you to check out my content because I think it speaks for itself and um, show you some cross-cultural people-to-people -people exchange we did in the summer. There's a, my favorite part of this video is the group from Ohio, high schoolers using Chinese to ask questions to Chinese students. I visited Beijing and Hunan this summer and I took their questions to the kids in China and they answered in English. So it was a really wonderful project where we got some fun 
interactions, people with people exchanges going on there. So if we could check out the video and we'll, we'll keep on talking. Thanks. Hey, what's up? I'm Bai Jie. I'm sure you've all made this face before. So how do you say duck face in Chinese? <laughs> do, do, do. Do, do, zui. Do, do, zui. Do, do. If something is like do do, it's sticking out. Do, do. And your zui is your mouth. It's like you're putting a Z in front of the word way. Zui. Stick out mouth. <laughs> do, do, zui. Do, do, zui. So, like when you're taking a selfie, you could say, All right, everybody, duck face. How are da jia yi lai? Do, do, zui. Da jia yi lai. Do, do, Did you learn it? Prove it. Send me a do, do, picture at Crazy Fresh China. <laughs> okay, bye. Dong se la. Dong se la. Dong se la. How do you use that? I'm freezing. Wo dong se la. Wo dong se la. Did you learn it? Prove it. Make a vine and tell me where you live and if it's dong se la where you live. <laughs> okay, bye. How do you order a medium soy latte in Chinese? So they'll ask you, Ni what do you want? And you'll say, Zhongbei medium, dou nai, soy, na tie, latte. You guys, I'm obsessed with this song. Why can't be so rude? Gonna marry you anyway, marry that girl. So how do you sing, why you gotta be so rude? In Chinese. Ni wei shen ma zhen ma tu lu. 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 Ni you wei shen ma why zhen ma so tu lu rude. Ni wei shen ma zhen ma tu lu. How do you say flip flops? In Chinese, <laughs> 人字拖. 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 Flip flops kind of look like the character for Ren person, right? Do you see it? I see it. Ren. Ah! Renzi means the character for Ren. Tuoxie is like a sandal. Renzi is this type of sandal. Flip flops. I love your flip flops. 我非常喜欢你的人字拖。我非常喜欢你的人字拖。Shishangdaren. Fashionista. Hey, what's your favorite Chinese word? Bar. Bar, what does that mean? Swag. That's what I got, y'all. <laughs> oh, nice. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni zai shi wan de zhong wen ci shi shen ma? Wo shi huan, uh, tai niu la. Uh, uh, awesome. Why is that your favorite word? Uh, I like it because you can call anything a cow and it's still cool. <laughs> oh, nice! So what's your favorite Chinese word? Du jia shang. What does that mean? Unicorn! Unicorn! What does that mean? Mayo. What does that mean? Which don't have? Don't have. Which, why is that your favorite? Inwei wo mayo zhang zai chi mayo. Inwei wo mayo mayo. <laughs> My mind just exploded. <laughs> My favorite Chinese word. Well, I love. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. I love woo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to present the coolest moment of my life where I got to ask, Will I am of the black eyed peas? What? How he picked his Chinese name. It's cool, I can die now, it's fine. Tell me your Chinese name. Um, my name is um Wee La Yan. That's awesome name. Do you remember what it means? Yes, it means the uh, future eye. Eye of the future. Awesome. Why did you pick that Chinese name? <laughs> I was geeking out on the internet once, and I typed in uh, future inside Google Translate, and I hit translate, and then I asked it to speak it back to me, and when you type in future in Google Translate, what comes out is, will I? And then I was like, well, what? what is an or am? And then there, it's I. Okay, hands down, one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Like, I still can't believe that happened. I just visited students learning Chinese in Ohio. What's up, Gehenna Lincoln High School? And students learning English in Beijing and Hunan. La, mei zi la.
啦，妹子啦。I took some selfie style videos of American students using Chinese to ask Chinese students questions. I showed those questions to Chinese students who answered the Americans' Chinese questions in English. It's like the most Cross-cultural thing you've ever seen in your life. You, Mei Ying, you want to ask Chinese students what question? You, the most favorite English word is what? Oh, what is your favorite English word? Do you have a favorite English word? Um, maybe duck. Duck. <laughs> Caddy, what's your favorite English word? Uh, my English word actually is not an English word. Oh, uh, Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. Can we sing it together? Uh, yeah. Hello. Your name? Uh, I'm Ha Bing. Hey, what's up? 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 I have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> you have to do it. She probably still uh, popular in China. And I uh, like rugby and I uh, like beatbox. Oh my god! Those are our great students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that. The beatbox uh, scene was totally unprompted. Both students just really love to beatbox, and I thought it was really an impactful moment to show a kid in Ohio and a kid in Beijing are just really into beatboxing. Uh, I am speaking with you today because. Our programming has made an impact in China and in America. To date, the programming has generated more than 400,000 social media followers, and as Damian said, recently a billion social media interactions.、Uh, we've been featured in Wall Street Journal this year and Bloomberg Business Week. None of that was my plan at all. Graduating high school in small town Ohio,、uh, seeing a Weibo didn't exist, iPhones didn't exist. Uh, I was just a band nerd. You know, I was really into marching band.、Uh, if you've seen the show Glee, then you know all about my high school. We had football teams and cheerleaders and Glee club, and we had a 300-member marching band.、Uh, so it was really my passion. Number one was was music.、Uh, I even had a calendar that counted down to the first day of band camp. So,、um, but when I Decided to go to college. My very best friend from college, Evan Lilly, is here. Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan.、Um, <laughs> and、uh, he knows that when I went to college, that I decided to major in journalism. So I left music behind, and I joined up、uh, with like a hundred different clubs. Philosophy club, I joined, and I hated it. Boxing club, I joined, and I broke both of my middle fingers. <laughs> Uh, which made going to the salad bar really fun. I was like, "Help me make a salad!" And、um, but the one hobby that really stuck in college was Chinese. The class that really made the biggest impact for me because I'd heard that it's a very musical language.、Uh, the tones、uh, can dictate what the word means. And to me, as a 19-year-old in Ohio, I thought that was really wonderful. It was a new way to fill that void in my heart where music was. And as soon as I signed up for my first class, I was hooked.、Uh, I was fascinated that ma, 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 and ma are four different words, and I can call you my mom or my horse. And、um, what really solidified my passion, though, for Chinese was my teacher, Zhu Lao Shi, Zhu Bo. She was from Beijing, and her passion for Chinese language and Chinese culture really turned into our passions as well. 
So I asked Zhu Lashi, how can I continue learning Chinese in the summer? And she said, every time she says my name, she starts with a ah, bai jie. <laughs> to this day, bai jie, just follow me to Middlebury. Because uh, she taught second level Middlebury College Summer Language School, which is top notch. They, they do the best work with helping kids learn Chinese. So I didn't know what that was. So I was like, okay. And I signed up on the last day I possibly could and I got in. When you get to Middlebury, you sign your name and you pledge that you will only speak the word you're, the, the language you're learning for the next nine weeks, which feels like a really long time when you're a 19 year old. Uh, and as soon as I got to class, I was coming from a state school to Middlebury and I was not level two. I was in level two classes, but I was failing all my ting shies. I was really, Zhu Laoshi pulls me aside at lunch, bye jie. You're failing all your ting shi <laughs> And I said, Jula, sure, I'm really not ready. Maybe I should go down a level. She said, you're my student. I will lose face if you got on a level. <laughs> so she would take me after all morning classes and after lunch in a private session and make sure that I learned the grammar structures and the vocabulary that all my other, you know, tong shi men knew. Um, I'm starting to like think in Chinese now, seeing all you guys. and. And she got me to a level in Chinese faster than anybody else could have, because she put time in to a very passionate, yet slightly um, unprepared student. So I owe a lot to her, the work ethic that she taught me, as well as all the Chinese that she taught me. Um, so that was my kind of journey to Chinese. I get that question a lot, and I like to clear that up. Uh, and. I really started to connect with Chinese language conversationally when I got to study abroad in Beijing and Hangzhou. I lived with roommates who were my age, so 19, 20 year old um, students in Beijing and Hangzhou. It was the first time I got to see modern China through the eyes of my peers. They got to show me where they like to get snacks. They got to show me who they have a crush on. And we all talked about it in Chinese. And we would go sing KTV every weekend. Ah, you know. And my Beijing uh, roommate loved to sing this one song. Uh, it's pretty old now, but she would sing every time. The that one, Pan Weibo. And my, my Hangzhou roommate was a little quirkier. She watched Titanic every weekend without fail on her computer. <laughs> oh yeah, I know that movie by heart. And every time we w went to sing KTV, she would sing, Dear Far, Wherever You Are. She had a very low voice. Uh, but their passion for their culture and their language and their passion for sharing it with me, it, you know, years down the road inspired me to create these video blogs. But I'm getting my head of myself. I graduated in 2008. Not the, not the best time to graduate undergrad. Uh, <laughs> economic issues. Uh, and also, the Beijing Olympics had just ended. Uh, so there, the whole cultural structure for bringing a foreigner over to fill a job spot had definitely shifted. So I did a lot of random things again. I applied for grad school. I ran a half marathon. I learned a bunch of songs in the ukulele. Uh, and then I got a phone call like, hello, Jessica, can you come fill this job next week in Washington, DC? And my dreams shattered because I really, as soon as I came back from Beijing, I wanted to make sure I found a way to go back. So it's not what I'd planned. And the Weekend after President Obama's first inauguration, I moved to DC during an ice storm, so that was fun. And I became a contractor for the China branch of Voice of America, and I was translating transcripts. Uh, day three on the job, my manager at the time approached me and asked if I would like to be on camera in Chinese. I politely, excuse me, reminded him. I was not a broadcast major, I was PR, I don't know, I've never been on camera in English, let alone Chinese, Ugh, I don't know what I'm doing. And he said, don't worry, you'll learn on the job, figure it out. So three months into the first job, I was assigned to my first dream project, which was a travel show that teaches, that is hosted in Chinese and teaches the English differences between Americans and, and between the US and the UK. So my first on-camera experience was a stand-up, and behind me is Buckingham Palace, and it's Easter. 
a lot of people go to Buckingham Palace on Easter, and they were all kind of looking at me like, what is she saying? Everybody in Europe speaks two, three languages, not a big deal, and they're trying to identify what is she saying. They didn't know I was speaking bad Chinese. <laughs> and I was so nervous to start, it's London, so it's raining, and uh, that was the first time I realized I really needed to um, dig deep, remember what Julashtra taught me about learning the basics, basics, keeping my head down until I know what I'm doing, and just work hard until I achieve that. So we had a very successful program. We did 10 more all around America, teaching about English and showing American culture and things like that. And in 2011, we discovered, you know, the emerging scene of Weibo. Is, who's on Weibo? Lots of people, Weibo. I know you're all on WeChat now, Weixin. Um, so the scene of Weibo, summer of 2011, was really heating up. And uh, Voice of America traditionally makes uh, really great English language programming for people all over the world. And I pitched my next dream project, uh, which was learning, um, learning English online on Sina Weibo for our, uh, our, our Chinese audience on there, uh, which was a risk. And I'm very um, impressed that Voice of America decided, OK, we'll take a risk. We'll put this new programming up that we've never done before. It's never been on Chinese social media, and it's never been done on a daily basis. And we're counting on you to do this every single day. So I started to produce a daily three-minute video that taught a set of uh, English slang terms. I took a chance uh, the first week, or the first couple weeks of the, of the blog, and we taught um, a set of uh, phrases in an episode called yucky gunk. Um, in Chinese, it's ge zhong shi, which so it's like yan shi, bi shi, er shi. Um, you know, eye gunk, ear gunk, boogers, things like that. And it exploded, it went viral. Of course, that's the one where I'm talking about all that stuff. The one that blows up is that one. And uh, in the first month and a half of being on Scene and Weibo, we got 100,000 followers. That episode alone had more than a million views, and it really started to take off. So starting from OU, where my passion was Chinese, and following that into my first job led me to working hard in sort of the content creation, finding my next new passion for content, for entertainment, for education, and for community building. The great thing about OMG Mayu and the reason why we've established this level of wonderful trust among our um, Chinese followers on there is that every day we ask them what they want to learn. We ask them a question. We, we want to know what they think. We, we want to make this a conversation, not just an episode. So there's just been this wonderful community built online as well. So Sinu Weibo really helped us uh, do that. In the meantime, I'm creating a little, little company. I have to like become a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And I have a production company called Jay and Beinecke Inc. And this January, we launched Crazy Fresh Chinese. Uh, having a passion for learning Chinese, I wanted more Americans to have the same passion. So every day on Crazy Fresh Chinese, since January 1 this year, we've been teaching uh, one Chinese slang term, which is mostly what you saw today. And we've been all over the country, Los Angeles, not Chicago yet, I should stay longer, um, all of the East Coast and Ohio. And uh, we've done a lot of classroom uh, presentations. And uh, at the end of each episode, we also ask to show a Vine, an Instagram video or a very short application video that's even shorter. When we started OMG Mayu, it was three minutes long. Now it's only a minute and a half. Crazy Fresh Chinese is 30 seconds long. And Vines and Instagram videos are 15 to 7 seconds. So I'm going to have to just say, like, ni hao, and then that's going to be the episode in like two <laughs> years. Uh, <laughs> but um, the journey of figuring out what's the content going to be What's the format going to be? How are we going to engage with the community? And how are we going to get the message out has been um, an evolving challenge and an opportunity um, to, to really build a fun production company that focuses on, on web content, cross-cultural educational web content. So what I wanted to do with you all today is have you think about what your passion is. If you were doing a blog, it doesn't have to be a video blog, uh, but they're fun. 
Uh, if you were writing a blog, if you're doing a photo blog, if you were making a Tumblr, an Instagram account, anything like that, what would you talk about? How would you do it? So I wanted to present today, I've never really done this before at a, at a university, I want to show you how I do what I do so that you are able to do the same. And as you're watching this, I want you to think about how you would do it. And if um, anyone who raises their hand and presents what they would do with their blog will win a crazy fresh Chinese t-shirt. Okay. I brought some swag. We got some t-shirts and we have some buttons. So um, that'll incentivize it. And I really look forward to keeping in touch with people who really do want to start their own blogs because um, I, you all have wonderful expertise and you're so, uh, you're so intelligent, you're so brilliant. I talk about slang, but you might want to talk about the environment. You might want to talk about economics, or you might want to talk about coffee. Like you could talk about living in China, living in the U.S. as a Chinese person, anything that you'd want to do. So, so you want to start a blog. I want to deconstruct how I put a blog together. The format of Crazy Fresh Chinese is this. There's the opener, there's the, how do you say this in Chinese? And then you hear that bong, 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 bong. And that establishes the visual with the language. And then there's the example, and it's over in 30 seconds. That's the format. And uh, it's, a, it's a format that doesn't change unless we're doing it in an interview show, and that's all selfie style, and it's very fun and interactive. Um, I make it very fast. I try to get the message across as fast as possible. I'm sure you've seen videos on YouTube before where they're 10 minutes long and you look at that 10 minutes and you're like, nope, not watching that. <laughs> so you've got to make sure what you're saying, it's in a condensed format, you're getting the message across uh, very quickly, uh, but it's still entertaining and engaging. Um, be cowpool, uh, which means be dependable. You know, uh, if you post a video blog on Monday at 9 a.m., you better do that every Monday at 9 a.m. because people will start paying attention every Monday at 9 a.m. where they'll think, oh my gosh, Crazy Fresh Chinese which went up, I must have missed it. And they go back, they remember, it makes an impression on your followers. So um, that's what I mean by be kaupu. And it's not about you. I'm an only child. Do I like attention? Sure. <laughs> um, but every episode isn't about what I ate for breakfast and the shoes I want to buy tomorrow. It, it's about in, engaging with an audience that wants to learn a language, that wants to learn a new culture, and it's about empowering that audience. So think about how you can do the same. And your opinion could be involved in that if that's what you would like your format to be. But just think about making it about the people who are watching it. How, how, what do they get out of what they're watching? Um, so you want a job, ah, we all want jobs. Um, <laughs> but what are you doing? There's a perk to blogging before you have an internship, before you have a job, um, and it builds your portfolio. Um, you could be a, a poli-sci major, you could be an econ major. What are the majors in the room right now? What's your major? What's that? International studies. Public policy, things like that. To build your portfolio before an internship and before a job, you can start a blog. You can find what you're interested in specifically in your field and start building content on what you've studied and sort of show how you have taken initiative to, um, to offer this information to others and to show that you're a leader in that, in that field, right? So that helps you become an expert. That helps you become, oh, she makes a blog on slang, therefore she's an expert on slang in China, right? There's no other prerequisite of, of what makes me know slang more than another person or how to say things, but I made sure I had the skills to make a blog, and that's what I identified as my passion is people-to-people -people exchange and communication. So it could be about anything that you're also passionate about. Um, and the new skills that you need to learn, I didn't know Final Cut Pro before I started this blog. I learned video editing on, on my own and social media um, management and things like that. You know, being engaging in another language on video is also a skill I needed to acquire. Conversational and then that level of Chinese, it was a long, very painful process. <laughs> um, and then establishing your brand, it kind of identifies you as somebody who knows this topic. 
Um, and then that's your passion. Do it now, don't wait. This is how you can take charge and um, establish yourself as somewhat of an expert or someone who understands it to the point where you've made a blog about it. So I'd like you to take a look at these questions. What's your passion? What do you hope to, if you were to create a blog? I made a little <laughs> a fun example of, of, of what a blogger a uh, caffeinated Lao Wai would write about mm -hmm. if they like to talk about coffee in China, um, which I might do someday. Uh, so think about, take a second uh, and think about a blog you would want and if anybody's ready first, um, then you will get a, get a t-shirt. T-shirts are ready to go. I think we have about five or six in there. Take your time. I could set a timer. Okay, oh, we got a brave soul in the back. What's your idea? If you could stand up, Jan Chilai. Huh. <laughs> um, I guess I could say passion is just learning different languages. Oh, she's got. I guess I could say learn a passion. My passion would be learning different languages. So I could start a blog that would help people choose a language other than their native language to start learning. So it could be it could be text or maybe video. So it could be like Blogspot, Tumblr, or YouTube or something like that. Um, I would have to study like for skills. I'd have to study more languages. <laughs> like, right now, I only know Chinese. get that but, done, right? Yeah. To be honest, good. Yeah. So I would learn more and then going through my process of exploring new languages, I could use that to help other people find the language they want to learn. And it could be weekly. And I, would en I could engage with people by asking them what languages they want to learn. And I don't know a name, though. <laughs> you don't know a name? Names are important. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. But very good. Good job. Great blog idea. <laughs> Any other ideas? Damien, if you wrote a blog, what would it be about? <laughs> a new one. Yeah, I sort of had one. In a book and things like that. Uh -huh. But you have other passions for other things, right? Uh, like, Do I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually Good. like the coffee. Uh, actually, um, yeah, I like food a lot, and I think uh, there's a lot of interesting th things to write about on, on Chinese food versus uh, on American food. I've always thought um, I've always thought there was actually a lot of similarities between Mexican food and Chinese food, like real Mexican food and Chinese food. You know, really? rice, the pork is kind of the same. I would totally read that. Two cultures that love cilantro more than other cultures. <laughs> also, uh, and, and, and then the burrito thing, you know, like the Chinese get the burrito thing. So, right, they totally so, get it. You know, or, or like, a, you know, like a food truck thing. Food like, trucks, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, okay. how, would you, how would you start a food truck in Beijing? That kind of stuff. So oh, I would that's totally what I would read do. that blog. Did but, you have a hand up? But I don't leave it. Awesome. Thanks, Damien. Can I get a t-shirt? You get um, a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Damien. I want a t-shirt, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I think my passion is more about like, literature, since, since it's very different literature in English, literature in Chinese, and it's also like... And, and sometimes it's just very hard, even you know that language, it's very hard to get that feeling of, it's the same feeling when you read the literature uh, fictions in your, own, in your own native language. So I think, I'm not sure how, how I would want to run it, but I think like, that's some topic I definitely want to like, dig into it. That'd be wonderful. Right. Thank you. you make it a weekly comparison blog Thank or something you. like that. Good job. Thank you. We've got uh, another idea in the back. You can pass the mic back. <laughs> um, my name is Azana, and my passion is like running and exercising. So I said I would like to start a vlog about like I think 
running and exercising. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, it would be a video blog because you get to see the motion and like I like things slow motion when you show them in slow motion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really on social media, but if I were to do anything, it would probably be Vine because Vine engages you just in and out. Um, That's a good point. Post schedule, it would be a weekly thing because if you're um, if you're an athlete, then you you do it. It's it's a routine. You never stop um, engaging my followers. Um, I just think it's interesting. It'll be interesting to learn about like other people's workout schedule in different countries. Um, I said my blog name would be. Can you Pabu? Can you Pabu? I love that. Maybe yeah. when you study abroad, you can you can blog about your favorite running routes in China. Okay. I would love to have a blog like that because I never know where to run. Um, anybody else have any fun? We got an idea in the back. Uh, yeah, my name is Jay, and actually I'm running. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, my name is Jay, and uh, actually I'm running a social media platform on WeChat. Yeah. Uh, you know that the WeChat public account, I guess. Maybe mm -hmm. some of the foreign uh, friends doesn't know that, but uh, actually it's pretty popular in China. And actually my passion is in uh, social enterprise, and I have uh, a company uh, called uh, We Do Care. Mm -hmm. And the main idea is using a crowdfunding uh, platform to uh, start Get some money for uh, the Peking University's students when they initiate some kind of uh, social project, and mm -hmm. we just uh, funding them to do their project. So and why did you start the WeChat? What? what um, how is that helping your platform? Uh, actually, I uh, use this uh, donate as you spend uh, idea to uh, build my crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh, platform, and I use the. Just uh, I post uh, the project, uh, what we do and what we have done every single uh, Tuesday, and we just update the buyers uh, what we are doing and how we are doing, so that uh, it's become uh, more opaque and mm -hmm. they know what's going on and where they're. Money going. So, yeah, WeChat is yeah. the number one social media platform yeah, that, right that, now, that right? Everybody's on WeChat, yeah. on, on Weixin. Yep. Very so, cool. Thank you. That's, that's a great that's idea. Right now. Yeah. Cool. Man. He's already got a blog. Do you have a, we have a, we have a blog idea if you want? Not exactly. I have a thought and a question for you. Okay. Um, but the thought is um, just that, you know, we all know there's so much cross-cultural misunderstanding between China and the United States, and it seems like this you know, all the students who are here are in a power of position, you know, a position of power where they can help, you know, people in China understand more clearly what's really going on in the States. And so I wonder what your thoughts are about how welcome blogs about that kind of stuff would be in China and whether you have advice for, for the, you know, people in the audience about how they might address those issues. You know, you guys all know what's going, what America's really like for better and worse. And, you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding. And so you're in a position where you can actually make some positive contributions. We had a really great uh, idea from a student yesterday with 100,000 Strong. She wanted to make a blog uh, called Help, I'm Living in China. And it's inspired by an experience she had. She got locked out of her host mom's house and she didn't know how to call a locksmith. And she didn't even know how to say locksmith. So she wanted to create a blog that helps the day-to-day -day life of a um, non-Chinese person living in a Chinese city. And uh, I'm sure a blog that helps others vice versa living in Chicago, coming from Ningbo or Hangzhou or anywhere, uh, say like this is where, uh, this is how you can function, this is where you should go in Chicago to kind of um, to solve the daily problems that you have. And related to that, Crazy Fresh Chinese and, and um, OMG Mayu have addressed that, um, they've they struck a chord and they've established that trust with a young audience uh, because we're talking about things that they want to know how to say because their environment, their people-to-people -people environment is something that they want to improve. They want to make friends who aren't Chinese and we want to make friends who are Chinese. And the way to do that is to be able to communicate. It's essential. And the education of that 
is, is my passion and, and sort of my goal. And you can apply the passion for running, the passion for business, the passion for literature to that goal. You know what I mean? So I think if you do it and you're earnest about it and you're a um, and you and you make a, a, an effort to be interactive and to create a community around that, I, I don't think there's any problem at all. We have a blog or a question? Well, we can open up to questions too if you'd like. Yeah, well, let's open it up and we can talk about anything. So uh, I'm a chemistry major here. Uh, I'm actually doing a PhD now. Uh, I have a lot of passions. So uh, speaking like uh, skiing and uh, running, I do love them. But I think there are a lot of uh, very good blogs already, like uh, Runner's World is a journal. Uh, also, there's a lot of skiing web websites on the uh, internet. Mm -hmm. So probably I won't do that because uh, there's nothing unique I could provide. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I will do something else that, that's unique to me. Like, right. Uh, yeah, right. Like uh, I love like uh, uh, photography, but uh, there are very good photography websites and blogger blogs. I may provide something unique. Like uh, in Chicago, I do like uh, daily uh, photography, like what people um, do what people wear every day. It's a fashion in Chicago, or yeah, people could see um, uh, what's going on here from China, right? I would like my audience would be uh, facing the, the Chinese audience. It's a good point. And yeah. anyone planning to come to, Sh to Ch Chicago, like what kind of clothes should I bring, right? right. Like what yeah. kind of coat do I need? Yeah, you're like, gonna need I, a big one. Mm -hmm. Like uh, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. And that's I think that's a good point. Plenty of people have done English teaching or language teaching, but I do it my way, and you do that your way, and she does the running blog her way, and we all, it, the, it's adding that personal touch to it that can really, um, can really make a difference and start to take hold of that platform. I think it's great. Yeah, I think that's just one uh, aspect. I, um, Chicago style, what would you yeah, call it? Chicago, yeah, Chicago, In, yes. Well, so, is there a Chinese, well, you wouldn't call it. I Chicago. mean the name, Like okay. the name in Chinese, what do you think you call it? In Chinese, there will be like uh, the same pronunciation, pronunciation, maybe different characters. Like, uh, ah, yeah. Okay, very like, cool. Uh, there's a word called a ge. It's like a small um, attic, something like that. Okay, very yeah, cool. Maybe, very yeah. cool. Well, you do like true dog or true for Chicago, so no Chicago. Yeah, yeah. No Chicago. That's right. <laughs> very cute. I like it. Yeah. Good so, job. Great ideas, yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Um, happy to open up the questions now, or do you, or do you have a Can blog? Can I ask a question? I don't have a sure. blog. No blogs. <laughs> I got a question. Um, so uh, the, there's an establishment in China, educational establishment, political establishment, economic establishment, that would love, I am sure, to connect with young people in China the way you connect with young people in China. But you're American. And what's more, so you've got a situation in which you have a generational divide, plus you have this international divide where I think for a lot of the establishment people that find it hard to connect with youth in China, those are many of the same people who are also quite mistrustful of Americans. Mm. So I'm wondering first how those sorts of people react to you, if at all. Mm. Second, do they see what you're doing as challenging to them in some way? I don't mean in a political sense, because right, you're teaching language, it's, it's educational exchange, it's people-to-people -people interaction, but it's still very powerful as a tool. And you have a fan base in China that people would be dying to have. So I'm just curious, when you get away from your fan base and you get uh, other constituencies in China, how did they react to you? I, uh, that's a great question. I could not speak to how an upper level group in China sees OMG Mayu. I'm not sure, if, I'm, maybe they've seen it. Uh, I've not interacted with those individuals. Uh, our side of the pond loves it. We, we showed it at the State Department last year and it was a part of the people-to-people um, -people exchange uh, event with um, with Secretary Kerry and with the female Lu Yandong, uh, and that was great because they were bringing together the the theme of that was uh, innovation and education, so it kind of fit right there um, in that in that space. 
how they view it, I think, and, and the, the power of the platform that you speak of, I appreciate. The power there, um, again, is I've, I've always made it about the, the follower, and it, and it kind of comes from what they want to talk about. All I post really is the conversation starter. Today you're learning about how to say, well, don't sell I'm freezing. And then I ask, you know, questions relating to that at the end, you know, uh, where do you live? Is it don't sell where you live, right? And, or I'll say like, I'll say that in Chinese and, and the comments will flow in. The, co the conversation that comes from that is all based on culture. It's based on communication and it's based on interactions. And I think it is effective because um, TV shows like Two Broke Girls and things like that are really popular in China. The characters don't stop and explain, you know, a phrase like, here's what go ham means, you know, like, that's, that they don't do that. But when you're in, interacting with somebody and you're constantly saying, I'm sorry, I don't understand, I'm sorry, I don't understand, that's also awkward. So this is a, it's an intersection between um, a TV show and a, you know, a e do e conversation. A, man, my Chinese is coming out today. Um, I think it's that really perfect intersection that makes you feel like you're having a conversation, but it's in the privacy of your cell phone or it's on the computer, and that's the feel from it. Um, if that's powerful, I'm, I'm glad, because that means we're just helping people learn how to communicate with each other. Everything we talk about is based on what young people care about. It's no, and I'm, as an American, am able to talk about that with hundreds of thousands of young Chinese people because what we care about on a day-to-day -day basis in our sort of daily life culture is so similar. Uh, if it was really that different, if there was really this opposite view of the world, then I would not be able to connect. But the fact that what we care about every day is so similar, then that connection's happening, it's powerful. And I think with the whole visa extension too, that's gonna get even better because people will have even longer of a time to, to um, uh, visit with each other and learn about each other's cultures. I think it's a positive development. Any questions? Questions or comments? Question in the back first. I think I saw her hand first, and then we'll. No, she's got it, Mike. It's okay. okay. Um, well, I'm a student in high school. I'm learning Chinese still. So, um, my biggest difficulty is applying myself. So, my question to you is: How did you find that medium where you were able to, like, get over the whole barrier and just apply yourself and feel comfortable with like making mistakes and everything? I think that's, that was, I instantly thought of that, feeling comfortable making mistakes. As I said, I was the worst student in my class for a very long time. And I had to be okay with not sounding so smart, but still working really hard. And I think when you have these milestones and goals that you set for yourself to learn this set of characters and to learn how to ha talk about this, then that's a personal record. I'm a runner too. You know all about PR, personal record. You can't compare to whoever ran that race. Only your uh, um, outcome is what you have to base your uh, progress on. So I think setting those mini goals for yourself, and it might be above what other students in your class are working on or might be a little bit below, but you've got to be sort of have that confidence there, and you'll get it for sure. Jayo, And then watch Crazy Fresh Chinese. <laughs> um, we had a question here, and we'll get you. So, so I was just wondering, so sort of just go along with what he said before that you said you sort of figure out your way of doing that, but how did you actually figure out your way and how did you find it was a su successful way relative to other people who are running similar programs? Um, I didn't worry about who's doing something already. Okay. I wanted to do something with my personal touch to it. Uh, I also found a void in the market. I really had not seen anything like this before. If I had a Chinese teaching uh, program to watch when I was studying Chinese, it would have been so much more fun. 
and the same with English. And a lot of the language I saw, you know, all these language teaching videos on YouTube are so boring and they're so long and <laughs> they're so silly. And I wanted to make something that um, related to the current energy and attitude of young people and what they really want to learn how to say. So um, I established what our goal was and what our objective was, and I established how to how to achieve that day by day. And just there have definitely been critics and and um, people along the way, but you kind of just stick to it because you you have to. Uh, we had a question back there, and I got you. Thank you. Uh, first, sorry. Uh, thank you. First of all, I want to express my uh, gratitude for for you because uh, three years ago when you started with your video blog, I met this wonderful um, lady in the bus stop, which I started a conversation with by your video blog, wonderful, and uh, she now is my girlfriend. So uh, oh! thank you very much for that. Hey, right, round of applause. <laughs> Good you. job. So, uh, OMG Mayu, <laughs> love connection. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I just started a dating site. <laughs> That'd be such a good idea. OK, go ahead, please. Well, thanks. So um, you just introduced that uh, there is ob obviously a growing trend, a growing interest of um, American culture, American language in China. Mm -hmm. and But uh, at the same time, there is another maybe uh, another trend in China, which is also very uh, visible in China, uh, especially in recent, recent years, uh, which is kind of nationalist, kind of some some kind of hostile against American values, American mm -hmm. um, so on so forth system, so on so forth. And uh, one of the example would be the CNBC's headline, which is which says the Chinese president's favorite blogger hates America. Only recently came out. So, um, well, these two conflicting trends uh, are not necessarily mutually exclusive. They could be well present within one person, one individual. So, when you were interacting with uh, American people, uh, sorry, uh, Chinese people, those uh, normal folks, mm -hmm. grassroots people, have you, fight, uh, have you felt this conflicting trend, conflicting sentiment? And uh, what's your take on that? Thank I've you. had a lot of friends send me that article, and they're curious about, is this what you experience when you're online and when you meet all these fans that you go visit in Beijing and Hunan and all the places you visited recently? And I say, absolutely not. I never have, I've, I'm sure you've all seen YouTube video comment section, and it is like the most negative thing you've ever read in your life. It's everybody's stupid and everybody's, you're so bad at what you do. It, the exact opposite happens on Sina Weibo. Everyone's like, Baijie, thank you for helping me learn English. Baijie, you know, you've uh, provided so many wonderful conversational opportunities that have affected my life positively. Uh, they give a lots of jiayo and encouragement in the comments of Weibo, and I rarely see anything that is negative. That perhaps might be a cultural thing, they have the opportunity to voice, you know, uh, their disapproval of a program, but that doesn't happen. You know, they. I just, I always talk about how much love I feel on Sina Weibo, and I have this feeling now of responsibility to all these people who look to to the program to learn English and to learn about culture because they're curious and because they are hoping to gain knowledge and communication, I think that's great. Uh, I haven't witnessed it. One more question. We had, we have right here. Well, I, uh, thank you for coming, and uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, I have, I grew up actually sort of listening to Voice America and used to especially enjoy the program presented by Wood Guthrie and uh, it's a set of it's, uh, really from a very different generation, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but it's in that context, of course, the Voice of America itself is also evolving. It has multiple platforms and so on. Can you comment a little broadly in terms of your program, how it fits into the Voice of America and in terms of also this truly bilateral communications and some of the challenges in that regard. Initially, as I mentioned, it was a bit of a risk because it hadn't been done before. A programming, teaching English, being hosted in Chinese on Chinese social media. How is it going to go? You want to get 100,000 followers in a year? How the heck are you going to do that from DC? You know, it happened in two weeks. 
uh, and just I think they all the language um, uh, I'm, I'm quoting the president of Voice of America um, David Enzer who's been a big supporter of OMG Mayu and he said that their goal is to go to each language um, service within the Voice of America and um, see what they can do to further engage with the young people in those communities and perhaps offer the, the similar types of online social media language learning programming. So it's been a positive development because it's opened up opportunities as to how to use social media. Voice of America um, has come out with a lot of really fun new ways of doing that in the, in the recent future. Um, I live in New York and I, I don't interface with them very often. <laughs> I'm just glad that they still like OMG Mayu. It's been three years and it's still growing, so we're very lucky. And so thank you all for having me and, and coming up with fun blog ideas and uh, asking great questions. I really appreciate it. Please check out Crazy Fresh. And um, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.